Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the uh, Brexiteers' years-long attempts to claim to speak for Remainers, now rejoiners, and how their latest attempt at this tired strategy is taking form. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So, let's review where we are. A large majority of the public think that Brexit is going badly. Some of them think it might be made to go well, but now accept that some level of competence is required to make the prophesied benefits appear. Whenever you see pieces in, say, The Telegraph, which is about to be sold off to a hopefully less insane owner, the best they can come up with nowadays is that Brexit isn't as bad as Remainers said it would be. That's, that's what they've got left now. Oh, well, Brexit may be bad, but it's not as bad as Remainers said it would be. Therefore, it's actually a success. Now, the first thing to note is that Brexit is every, bad as, uh, every bit as bad as Remainers said it would be. That is the experts on the Remain side of the debate. Now, there might have been inexpert Remainers like, you know, George Osborne making wild claims which never came to pass. You know, that is a matter of supreme irrelevance. But those who understood how, for example, trade works were, were bang on the money with what would happen. But even if you believed that Brexit isn't as bad as Remainers thought it would be, that does not make Brexit a success or even all right. If someone says that a boxer will get knocked out in the third round and they don't get knocked out until the fifth round, that's not a success. It just means they got beaten up for two extra rounds before hitting the deck for the last time. But this is an attempt to rewrite history, which was taking place before we even left the EU. Brexiteers would make claims about what Remainers had said in order to downplay what people were seeing as the actual impacts of Brexit. But there's another sort of newer form of the same tactic. Still involves making spurious claims about what Remainers or Rejoiners are allegedly claiming. They're trying to say that rejoiners are upset at the government trying to strike deals around the world. No, we're upset that they're not trying harder to strike more and better deals around the world. We're upset about the fact they seem to be hiding from the world. But this latest form of it is from a Tom McTagg, who a, is a journalist, who's claiming that remainers are resisting, for example, Rishi Sunak's moves to work on areas uh, of interest like the CPTPP, uh, aligning with American regulations because we feel that it makes rejoining the EU harder as if just like Brexiteers, Remainers have now become ideological zealots who are throwing out the baby with the bathwater. But this is a nonsense for several reasons really. First, experts in trade on the rejoin side or even those sympathetic to rejoin are not opposing any of these moves. They are pointing out that none of them are putting us in a position which is better than being in the EU. It's like having a hundred pounds taken from us and then being given back a fiver as compensation. We're not complaining about the fiver. We're complaining about the loss of the hundred. The second reason is that there is no deal which either a Conservative or Labour government can strike with anyone around the world, which makes it harder to rejoin the EU. In fact, I think they make it more likely. For example, if the government had chosen to negotiate properly, taking the time to do so, which could take years and years, then the promise of these great post-Brexit trade deals would always sound shinier than the eventual reality. We would have to wait 10, 15 years to see these trade deals. And in that time, the Brexiteers would be saying, OK, we're going to have to go through a bit of a period of readjustment, but they're coming, they're coming, and well, they'll be brilliant. But because Boris Johnson essentially agreed to the other side's demands in order to grab his quick headlines, we've ended up with not only really bad deals, but obvious to the public that they're not benefiting from them. Like, it's one thing to persuade a public who are never going to seek out the wisdom of actual trade experts that a deal in the pipeline will be amazing. You can't really do that once you've put the deal in place. It's either amazing or it isn't. For example, the Australian trade deals now online, come the election, are the public going to be feeling the amazing effects? No. As far as I'm concerned, the more post-Brexit deals that we get in place, the better. This is because we can then compare them to the ones the EU has with those same countries. 
from a rejoiner's point of view, the more deals, the better. Not only will some of them be objectively better than nothing, which is what Brexit left us with, but every single one is inferior to those enjoyed by our EU neighbours who have more serious negotiating guidelines from their political masters and a much larger consumer market to flex within talks. Now, let me give you a visual representation of what our post-Brexit deals are like for the British public. Then let's look at another of the Brexiteers' gambits, because claiming that Brexit isn't as bad as some anonymous Remainer apparently said it would be only gets you so far. It doesn't take that long before anyone with a brain says, OK, but it's not as good as you said it would be either. And very few try to claim otherwise, because people simply aren't buying it. There are still a small number of Brexit supporters trying to insist that actually trade has somehow gone up uh, with their, their inflation fiddles. So they try to blame that on Remainers as well, because most Brexiteers have to accept, yeah, it's not going very well. Even Nigel Farage has said, yeah, it's not going well. So they'll blame Remainers. It's the Whitehall blob. Apparently, former Tory Chancellor George Osborne has been addressing some Northern Tories today, and he told them to stop blaming the woke blob, take some responsibility. I gather the statement went down like a lead balloon. But this is what they do. They blame others. They blame Remainers. Oh, sorry, Remoners. Earlier this week in Parliament, a Brexiteer Tory, can't remember his name, sorry, it's something Jones, uh, but he was trying to criticise Kemi Badnock's refusal to destroy every regulation we ever adopted as EU members. So Badnock was saying, look, the Conservatives aren't arsonists. And then she said, well, she at least wasn't an arsonist, presumably realising that quite a few of her Conservative colleagues are indeed arsonists, including the one who was questioning her. And as if to confirm the Tory MP in question was saying that he indeed did want to see the bonfire of unnecessary regulations. Now, he puts it like that, unnecessary regulations. He puts it like that so that nobody can argue. I mean, nobody wants unnecessary regulations. Of course, there can be a debate about which regulations are unnecessary and which are not, but a minister in a select committee hearing doesn't have time for a debate. They just need to answer questions. But I would still say she could have sunk his argument quite quickly and easily. She didn't need a debate. She could have asked him where this list of unnecessary regulations may be found. Because she's asked for it, and it turns out her predecessor didn't seem to have produced one. Where is it? Where are you talking about these unnecessary regulations? Where may I find this list published? I mean, what could he say to that? What, what? Because this is another one the Brexiteers have twisted. What Rees Mogg did was to create a bill which disabled any commonly agreed regulation implemented while we were members, including the very many regulations which the UK government came up with and persuaded the rest of the EU to adopt. But they don't say that. They call them unnecessary regulations. Easy as pie to deal with this argument, ask them where the list is. It doesn't exist, so they can't tell you. If they persist, ask them to name 10 unnecessary regulations. Given that they want to destroy thousands, 10 should be easy. They won't be able to. And people will say, well, you know, Bad Knock didn't want to get into a blue on blue argument. OK, but the blue on blue argument was happening anyway because the, the arsonist was wanting it. So just shut the argument down, I would say. But this is where Brexiteers are now. It's been over three years since we left the EU, over two since we left the Single Market and Customs Union. It's nearly two and a half years. They keep boasting about all the deals we've struck. Fine, great. So where are our benefits then? Oh, oh you can't expect them this quickly. Well, yes, yes, we can. You said we'd get immediate benefits. Oh, yes. Um, maybe we're a little bit optimistic with that one. All right, OK. So why do we have to wait for these benefits then? Why? Well, because we have to implement it all properly. Implement what? The trade deals? They keep boasting about how many we've got now. Trade deals all over the place. What else is there to implement? It's all supposed to be about the trade deals. We can strike better trade deals. We've got the better trade deals, apparently. Where's the benefit? There isn't a benefit. They're all worse than being in the EU. What's the next thing? Destroying regulations? Which regulations? Be specific. 
which regulations? Where's the list? Where can I read which regulations need to be removed and how it will improve the lives of Leave voters? Because if they insist that this will unlock benefits, someone must have worked it out. Someone must have written it down. Someone must have published it. Where is it? Like Brexit benefits, this list doesn't exist. There is absolutely nothing for Remainers or Rejoiners to fear from our government, Tory or Labour, engaging with the world, both the EU and others, striking deals, brilliant. Like I say, some deals will be good, some will be bad. But not any of them will be better than being in the EU. So go ahead, strike your deals, show us the benefits of them. Don't just talk about the benefits, show us. The Leave voter who wanted better access to NHS care, show them how your Brexit deals have made the NHS better in their area. Oh, it's made it worse? Oh dear. The Leave voter who wanted a better job, show them how these Brexit deals have given them a better job with better pay. Oh, their pay's gone down below the level of inflation? Oh dear. The Leave voter who was struggling to make ends meet, tell them where they can find the Brexit shop which has all the cheap food and clothes that Rees-Mogg promised. Oh, because the pound crash and our imports are now more expensive, the price of everything has gone up. Oh dear. They can't show you these things because it's all bollocks. And the thing is, it's not even bollocks that's working anymore. Used to, before, before reality hit. The public can't see the benefits, but they can see the reality. They don't want to see a graph or a complaint about Remoners or the woke blob. They want to see their life getting better. And you can't fool them that their life is getting better. Not many of them. It's not happening. And so the public are getting fed up with it all. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.